So think about uh, value at three levels. The level of the customer or the member, the level of the firm, the organization, and there's a question, what is the organization here? Is it the savings group? Is it Save Act, etc.? We We can come to that. And then the level of society. So think about a three level value framework. If we start with value for the member and value for the, uh, the customer, as uh, I would call, because a member sounds like somebody that's waiting for a handout. A customer must be served by those groups uh, mutually. Um, then that value for the customer goes a lot around uh, whether they use what, what is offered. And if they use it, it's sort of a proxy for we see it as valuable. Right, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of simple equation. But that uh, value can uh, sort of happen at two levels. The first level is a functional value. Did this thing do what it should do for me? Did it help me to save? Did it help me to get access to a loan? Uh, uh, did it help me to solve a pain point or a problem in my life by having that access, as uh, Rolf Fefe mentioned right in the beginning? The second thing is as powerful, is what was uh, the experiential value? What experience did they pick up by doing that? And you've heard a list of those uh, mentioned, but also it has to do with being empowered. Being empowered in terms of being part of something, learning something, and then using that to take a place in society, to take a place in the household, take a position there. Uh, we see this concept of empowerment at four levels. Do they have a choice in terms of participation and how they want to participate, what they want to, to obtain? Secondly, are they treated with dignity and respect in these groups? And absolutely, yes, because it's member-driven by themselves. And thirdly, do they have voice? Because once they have uh, dignity, respect, and voice, they start getting control over their lives and what they are busy with. So that's the, the sort of uh, two levels of customer value, functional value and experiential value. If we go to the firm, the question is, uh, oh, sorry, I want, I want to add one more thing. The final test to see whether these group members are really em empowered is when they stop seeing Save Act loans and savings as products, but as tools that they can take and to use in their lives. That's, that's a very important sort of change over from receiving services to em being empowered to use that service as a tool in your life. The second level is the level of the firm. And the question here quite often is, uh, what is the value for the firm? So let us stand back a little and say, the savings groups and the members are one. They're, it's actually the customers. And quite often, we want to scale these activities. And we say, well, how can we link the informal with the formal so that we can help to scale it? And for the firm, there must also be value. Otherwise, why would they participate? Say the firm is a formal bank, and they link with savings groups. We see that all happening all over Africa now. Uh, incidentally, there are 14 million of these members across the continent of savings groups. So it's an important uh, uh, way of including people financially. So, uh, and maybe a bit more, yes. So, uh, so it's an important consideration, how do you link this in the broader financial system to actually scale it much more? Uh, and if there's not value for firms, they won't be involved. But you can't allow the firm to take the value and then there's no value for the savings group. So it's like a conundrum here. Think about what uh, Nurfef has said. People pay 10% uh, on their loans, but they're paying it to themselves, to the group. So if you do a calculation at the end of uh, the year at, at share out, the internal rate of return of these groups are quite often between 30 and 40 percent. Mm. Show me a savings account that will give you 30 mm -hmm. or 40 percent. I don't know about that. So, uh, so just think what will happen if the banks or the other f financial service providers take that over. That return might, may go down much lower for the client and we have to think about that if you want to match the two. The value for society. And the value for society is a value in terms of how do we include people socially, economically, 
through including them financially. And I think it's also a consideration that's touched on uh, in the work. The, the important, uh, importance of the savings group movement is a big sort of, uh, uh, it's big evidence of how informal mechanisms that are sort of quasi or semi-formalized can actually play a big role in people's lives. And it leaves us with a question whether when we consider financial inclusion, we are too focused on the formal, the point that was made earlier tonight, and we don't sort of look broader at it at informal and formal finance as our sort of world of financial inclusion. 